Hello friends, for today's video I wanted to go through a list of what I consider to be hit or miss fantasy. And while this likely doesn't really need elaboration, I did want to provide a little bit more specifics to what I mean when I say hit or miss because there's a few different ways in which the concept of hit or miss can be applied. The most obvious one, and we'll definitely give a few examples for this, are certain fantasy series that they will have a very, very loyal fan base and the people that love the series, it's their favorite thing ever. They just have to keep rereading it. It's the thing that they wish everything else was like. They're constantly talking about it, rereading it, joining Reddit threads, talking about it, and they love it. And then other people read it and they're just like, eh. And it's a miss. And so it doesn't seem to have a lot of middle of the road fans. It doesn't seem to have very many casual fans. It's either really extreme or basically not at all. And then sometimes you have certain authors who within their own works, readers will really love one and not like another one at all. So we'll touch on that a little. And then there's one that I feel like is sort of a, a booktube darling. There's a couple that are booktube darlings where it feels like everybody either loved them or did not like it at all. And there's really no middle ground, but it's maybe not hit or miss more mainstream. It's, it's kind of more specific to booktube. And I actually wanna start with one of those and that would be Rage of Dragons. Rage of Dragons, so many people, when they first picked it up, it was an absolute five-star read. Oh my gosh, this is unbelievably good. It's so action-packed. It's like an adrenaline rush of a book. And then it sort of had the teeter-totter effect where other people, having heard that extreme hype, picked it up. And one, it was never going to probably meet that level of praise. But beyond just not meeting that level of praise, they also just didn't like it. And they thought it was frustrating to read, the main character was annoying, and they wished that it would kind of maybe have a little bit more than the amount of training sequences that you would get. So it is very action-packed. It does fly by, does go by very quick, but for some people they were looking for a little bit more, and then it caused that hit or miss effect. I haven't seen too many people pick this one up and be like, yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, I'm I think I'll keep going, but I don't know, we'll see. And it just doesn't seem to elicit that sort of a reaction in readers. I'm curious, because this one is one of the booktube darlings, what are some other books that you have noticed this be the case for? Have you seen other books where booktube, I think maybe Jade City, I could see having that extreme level of hype, but I don't know that it's had as many misses. The same way Rage of Dragons had the extreme hype and then a lot of the misses. Jade City was more, there are more casual fans, I would say. So I don't know if I would consider it as much, but I'm very curious what booktube darlings have been very, very highly praised that then had that pendulum effect. Uh, after that, we have one of the examples of a book where uh, the same author, has from book to book had very, I've had very different reading experiences and I know it's not just me, I know a lot of you have as well. And that would be Naomi Novik. I have said before that I really appreciate when authors are willing to try different types of stories, try different, different writing styles. And while there is something comforting in picking up a book by an author and knowing you're always gonna, you always know what you're gonna get and you know you're probably always gonna like it, but they're always probably gonna be pretty similar versus the authors where you're taking a chance, but it's so cool to see how different they can write from book to book. They're very versatile. And I always will respect that, even if it does sometimes result in books that are misses. So for me, a hit was Spinning Silver. And I think for the most part, a lot of people of the two between Uprooted and Spinning Silver, which aren't her only works, but they're the ones I'm referencing, uh, a lot of people end up picking Uprooted because it came out first. And uh, I've seen quite a few people dislike Uprooted, which was the case with me. And then they picked up Spinning Silver and they're like, this is much better. <laughs> and I had been very worried that I was going to not agree and that I was gonna pick up Spinning Silver and be like, it's like Uprooted. And so many of you said, no, no, trust me, I felt the same way about Uprooted and I'm telling you Spinning Silver is very good. So I kind of found out in reverse, instead of me having this experience and then seeing it, you had this experience and then I uh, ended up seeing it through going with your advice. So 
I'm very curious, what are some other authors that you think have the hit or miss effect? That sometimes it's one of the greatest things you've ever read and other times you just don't seem to connect with it whatsoever. After that, we're gonna get into a couple of the really, really popular series that uh, they definitely seem like they do not have casual fans. And that would be Malazin by Steven Erickson and also just like the Cosmere or Sanderson's works in general. So a lot of Sanderson fans are very, very, very big Sanderson fans. And a lot of people will just sing all of the praises for, especially I would say Storm My Archive and Mistborn. They'll tell you like, oh, Mistborn's the greatest when it comes to getting into fantasy. It's great if you're getting into adult fantasy, especially if you're going from YA fantasy to adult fantasy. It's so accessible. His worlds are so creative. His magic systems are so creative. And you've seen it, right? You've seen it here because I also too really love Sanderson. But Sanderson's interesting in that he can kind of fit in the same camp as what I was saying with Naomi Novik, where there have been a couple misses for me from Sanderson and they're not just a little miss, they're a big miss. And I'm like, um, if I started with that, I probably wouldn't want to read any more Sanderson. And for me, that was Steelheart. But I also think it fits into the, for some people, I think you see more casual Sanderson fans, but I still wanted to include him because you get such an extreme passionate fan base, but then you also have that other extreme of people that are just like, I don't get it. I don't understand why so many people think it's so good. I don't understand why people like his stories. It's just, and you'll see people say like, it's just basically anime in book form, which I never understand that insult because I'm like, anime is cool <laughs> and anime is fun. And I don't think it's the insult that other people think it is, but I suppose if you don't like anime, then then it doesn't work for you if you feel like it's anime in a book. But regardless, I do think that you will see the people that just truly are like, I don't understand. And Molassin, I think there are fewer casual Molassin fans just because it is such a it's such a different reading experience than a lot of other fantasy in, in ways that I think have to do with the world building and how much is revealed to you and the way that the connections between the reader and the character are established. I think it is relying on the reader having patience when it comes to when they're gonna feel those connections. And it also approaches world building in a way where you are at a distance for so long and then, you know, it takes books and books and books and the fans will tell you that it takes books and books and books. I only read the first two and I'm like, I just don't care for how uh, he chooses to reveal the world to you and the magic and the characters and the lore. It's just not my cup of tea. And there's 10 books in the series and a lot of them are very long. And because you don't have that connection, a lot of people, it doesn't mean everybody feels this way, but because a lot of people don't have that initial connection to at least a character or feeling really gripped by this awesome world because the world is so shrouded in mystery. And a lot of people are like, I'm done. I don't wanna keep going with this series. Definitely feels hit or miss. Another one that falls into this camp where it is among the more popular series would be Akatar. I think that Akatar, what I will give credit to Akatar for is it did start a trend. There's always, I shouldn't say always, but there have been fae stories for a long time, but I think the idea of fae as being really sexy love interests and things like that definitely became a lot more popular after the success of Akatar. And I think that blending of fantasy and romance has made it so that a lot of people who were fantasy readers picked it up and liked it. A lot of people who were romance readers picked it up and liked it. But there are <laughs> so many people that gush and so many people that got into reading again because of this series. And there's so many people that are just constantly looking for the next thing that's like Akatar. And then there are people that just truly, truly hate it. They hate it. You will find so many rant reviews about this series. Again, similar to Sanderson, of course, there's some casual fans. It's not like these are absolutes that we're talking uh, in, but it has such a, it just seems to have such extremes on either end. The last one, I'm kind of going back to where we started and bringing this full circle. This is not as mainstream. And it is a little bit of a booktube darling. It's kind of almost an indie darling because of the fact that it started self-published and then has been picked up. Uh, so it kind of had a much smaller following and then it got big enough that now it's gotten more attention on it. And that would be A Dowry of Blood. And this is one where because of how it's written and because of the subject matter, 
I think that the people who connect with it, it is so impactful and it's so moving. And it's following one of Dracula's brides. However, Dracula is never mentioned by name. And you're looking at the woman in the story and a few other people as well, them trying to recover from the manipulation and abuse that they faced as a result of being in a relationship with Dracula. And so it is in a lot of ways going to be something so many people connect to and it really showcases that headspace that a lot of people are in when they're stuck in that kind of a relationship. And it's not to say that if you dislike it that you're a horrible person who doesn't recognize like how important the story is or anything like that. And plenty of people can recognize the significance of a story without maybe still liking the way it's written or the characters themselves or things like that. Um, and that was, I would say, I kind of fell into that camp. I think that this book is very important and it is something so many people can relate to. And so I'm so glad that it exists, but it was kind of a miss for me. There's a couple of scenes too that I thought uh, made it so that it was a little frustrating actually. I don't see too many people picking this up and being like, it was pretty good. Yeah, I liked it. I don't, I didn't love it, but I don't, I just don't see that reaction very often. There are plenty of other fantasy stories that can be considered hit or miss. I'm very curious what are some other ones, whether they be really popular ones that seem to create such polar opposite reactions in people, or it's a book by an author and then another book by an author and they have such different reactions from readers. I would love to know your examples and also just personally, if there are some that it seems like everybody else loves and they're a giant miss for you, I'd love to know. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.